Hi class, in this recording we will be focusing on the alveoli. Our alveoli make up the vast majority of our respiratory membranes. We have millions upon millions of each alveoli in each lung and they are allow for us to pack a lot of surface area into our lungs. We have approximately 70 square meters in our lungs for gas exchange because of the alveoli. And as we look at the alveoli, here's an interior view of the anatomy of an alveoli excuse me, alveolus for singular. As we look at this, we have one simple squamous cell type known as type 1 alveolar cells that makes up the main wall of the alveoli. And because it's a simple squamous epithelium, it allows for us to have very rapid gas exchange across the respiratory membrane. Gas can go into the bloodstream and out of the bloodstream very quickly across a single thin cell. And this type 1 alveolar cell makes up the vast majority of the surface area of the alveolus. We also are going to have two other cell types. This type 2 and then the type 3 alveolar cells as well. As we look at the type 2 alveolar cells, those are cuboidal cells. Tim, I'm making a recording. Please don't do that. Um, that make up approximately 5% of the total surface area of the alveoli. These type 2 alveolar cells are going to produce pulmonary surfactant. And when we're talking about surfactants, I just want you to think of soaps or molecules that reduce surface tension. Or you can think of them as a molecule that are amphipathic. They have hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions. And it's a pulmonary surfactant, so it's associated with the lungs. This pulmonary surfactant is very important because it makes it easier for us to inflate our alveoli. Pul these type 2 alveolar cells, the surfactant cells, are one of the last cell types to maturate while we are developing in utero. And it's worth emphasizing that if somebody is born prematurely, a lot of times they have to be given a surfactant to breathe in through a nebulizer so that it's easier for that prematurely born baby to take their first gasps of air and expand their lungs. We also have type 3 alveolar cells, sometimes referred to as alveolar macrophages. These are cells that are going to remove dust from the alveoli themselves. If I back up a slide here, it's, oh, I went forward, not back. So here we go. So as we look at this figure here, it's notable there's no goblet cells. There are no... Uh, cilia either. We want this respiratory membrane that the blood diffuses across to be as thin as possible. So we don't want any mucus and we don't want any dust down here. If dust does make it down there, we have these alveolar macrophages which phagocytize the dust to remove it from the alveoli and keep the respiratory membrane clear. As we look at these alveolar dust cells, it's worth emphasizing that we lose lots of them. We sacrifice approximately 100 million alveolar dust cells, or alveolar macrophages, every single day because they work their way up into the mucus and get escalated or carried away within that mucociliary escalator while they get rid of all the dust which they phagocytized. Oops, wrong button. Sorry about that. Here we go. There, I cleared the screen. So as we look at our alveoli, the alveoli is going to have the type 1 alveolar cell, which I'm hot coloring green right here. Then we have a little bit of a basement membrane connecting that alveolar cell to the endothelial cell of a blood capillary. These three things, the two cells plus the basement membrane, all combine to make what is known as a respiratory membrane, which is very thin so that we can maximize the rate of diffusion of oxygen into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide out of our bloodstream. So this respiratory membrane is one of the thinnest membranes in our bodies to maximize the rate of gas diffusion within, this within our bodies. As we look at our alveoli, we don't want fluid to accumulate within the alveoli. If fluid accumulates within our alveoli, it's going to make the respiratory membrane thicker. 
it's going to slow down the rate of gas diffusion. So we're constantly drying out our alveoli by absorbing excess liquid into the capillaries. Our lungs are also going to have lots of lymphatic vessels in order to drain them faster than any other tissue or any other organ of our body. So not only can we absorb lots of fluid into the lymphatic capil or the alveolar capillaries, we also are going to have lots of fluid pulled out of the extracellular cavity by lots of lymphatic vessels. One of the reasons why we're able to pull so much fluid out of the lungs through the blood capillaries is because we have very low blood capillary pressure. And blood or L fluids will flow from areas of higher pressure to areas of lower pressure. This very low blood capillary pressure also means that the respiratory membrane is less likely to burst or rupture. And that's a good thing because if it was to rupture or burst, we would start to bleed out into our individual alveoli. And that's going to impair function, it'll really impair a gas exchange. As we look at the lungs as a whole, the lungs as a whole are going to have a double membrane wrapped around them, known as the pleura. Uh, this is one of the serous membranes of the body that we talked about last semester, or in the last course, Bio 214. The visceral layer is going to be pressed against the organ, parietal layers are always going to press against the cavity wall. So the visceral pleura is the serous membrane directly pressed against the lungs, and it's in blue in this diagram, and the visceral pleura is in red in this diagram. And then in between the visceral and parietal pleuras, we have a pleural cavity, just that small little space, area of potential space. And that pleural cavity is usually going to only be filled with pleural fluid. This pleural fluid is very slippery. It's going to allow for the lungs to expand and contract and move around within our thoracic cavities to reduce friction on our lungs. We also use the pleura and the pleural cavities to create pressure gradients. We need to have a lower pressure in our thoracic cavity than the external atmosphere so we can suck air into our lungs to inflate our lungs. And to help maintain that pressure gradient, we have these membranes around our lungs. These pleura also help to compartmentalize our lungs from the rest of the thoracic cavity. They help to make it, make it difficult for an infection to go from the mediastinum cavity to the lungs within the pleural cavity. That's all we have for this recording on the alveoli and the pleura. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them in the class discussion board or to shoot me an email. And as always, happy studies.